BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Have you considered renting a car to take that family trip versus using your own car? According to AAA, it costs 50 cents per mile to operate a car. If you are planning a long trip, renting may be the better option. If you do rent a car before you take your trip, check with your auto insurer and credit card issuer to see what coverage they provide. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmer's Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. Another me. And when you have multiple farmer's policies, you could save up to 45% on your auto insurance with the auto multi-policy discount. What's going on with our voice? I thought I'd add some drama. Well, isn't that something? Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available with select Farmers branded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges, Farmers New World Life Insurance Company, or affiliate. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Tonight, please join me at 6 o'clock because uh, we're doing this year's I'm Listening Special, a two-hour program talking about mental health awareness. I'm, I'm so happy to be involved in this because talking is so important getting the word out about how mental health is as important as anything you can be doing in your life and it's not just me talking about it we've got some great luminaries in the world who also believe about talking concerning mental health cage the elephant duff from guns and roses nikki six chris cornell's daughter lily who's got a new mental health podcast of her own which is fantastic talk has the power to save lives and if you want more information, again, tonight at 6 o'clock, we're going to be doing it here on The Rock. Head to imlistening.org. Let's play B-Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. So everybody scream his name. B-Mix. Don't be a loser. B-Mix. You're a loser. It is time to play. Wednesday, so maybe someone could whack him instead. Whack it. Let me see everybody do their Mr. Wacky then. All right. Wave Woo! Woo! those whack hands it. in the air. Be Mr. Wacky and uh, don't have any cares. Oh, I see what yeah. you're trying to do there. Done. Yeah. Wasn't very successful, but I yeah. saw you, I yeah. saw what you were trying to do. Attempts were made. Let's get to our contestant today. We've got Jeff in Olympia. Jeff, are you there? Whack it. Nice. Whack it. <laughs> How's everybody doing? My name is Mr. Wacky. Hey, Mr. Wacky. How you doing, guys? Hey, buddy. <laughs> Whack it. All right. Let me see everybody do their Mr. Wacky, then. All right. Woo! It's a twofer. All right, Steve, get out of here. Okay, get out, buddy. <laughs> For those playing at home, Jeff will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Jeff, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Nice. nice. Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey starred in the 2003 romantic comedy How to Lose a Guy in How Many Days? Right. Ten days. Yes. Dover is the capital of what state? Say again. Dover is the capital of what state? Pass. Impossible oh. is nothing is the slogan for what shoe company? New Balance? No. Converse? No. It is. Yes. How many Good. eyes does a bee have? Ooh. One. No. Two. No. Three. <laughs> no. The diaphragm is a muscle located where on the human body? The abdomen. Stomach. No. Chest. Yes. Lamborghini was founded in what decade? 50s. No. 60s. Yes. On a website browser address bar, what does WWW stand for? World Wide Web. Yes. In what year in the mid-80s were the first Air Jordan sneakers released? 86. No. 87. No. 88. No. Fissures, vents, and plugs are all associated with what geological feature? 
Pass. Ah, one, two, three, four, five <laughs> correct. Jeff, you could have done so much better. He could have. He really could have. You know, mid eighties. Well, yeah, you got to know that uh, mid eighties. Well, that maybe means. Steve yeah. won't listen either or yeah. hear it correctly, and yeah. maybe he'll screw up, and maybe we'll get a win loss. Oh, maybe we'll get a win loss or tie. Yeah. Oh, because well. I mean that's really all that can happen. Yeah, that, you're going out on a limb with that prediction. I mean, uh, Steve is from the wrestling world. Someone could come in and hit him with a chair, and, and then, then disqualification happens. Absolutely. <laughs> that's why today's. B Migs is a table, ladders and chairs match. Ooh, TLC match. I will pay for breakfast if somebody comes in and hits Steve with a chair. Ooh, Sarah. Won't be the first time. Mm-hmm. Sarah, be get the, the last chair. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any steel chairs here? I don't think so. Uh, They're hidden away right. somewhere. Well, find anything big. <laughs> Steve, are you ready? <laughs> well, <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm not going to go there. That just happened. Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey starred in the 2003 <laughs> romantic comedy How to Lose a Guy in How Many Days? 30. No. 69. No. Nice. 60. No. Dover is the capital of what state? Michigan. No. Massachusetts. No. Dover, Delaware. Yes. Impossible is nothing is the slogan for what shoe company? Impossible is nothing. Um, I'm going to go Adidas. Yes, Yoda. How many eyes does Thank a bee you. have? One. No. Two. No. Three. No. Uh, the diaphragm. Zero? Uh, no. Oh. The diaphragm is a muscle located where on the human body? Chest. Yes. Lamborghini was founded in what decade? 60s. Yes. In a website browser address bar. What does WWW stand for? World Wide Web. <laughs> yes. In what year of the mid-80s were the first Air Jordan sneakers released? 85. No. 84. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fish, fish, <laughs> fissures, vents, and plugs are all associated with what geological feature? Water. No. Air. No. Yeah. Dirt. No. Beginning with H. What is the real first name of Dakota Fanning? Harriet. No. One, two, three, four, five, six. You win, Steve. Six to five. Oh, Jeff, it was close. If you could have got that mid. It came down to the Jordans, man. Mid-80s, man. I mean, that was my time. Thank you. I totally forgot. (laughs) Stupid question. Uh Uh-oh, here we go. I feel like it's impossible to get a question wrong when you say mid any decade. Uh, you would be correct. Because all three guesses fall under the mid. Anything, because it would be 84, 85, 86. You People discovered get confused. a big secret. Yeah, that's a big secret. People get confused. Sometimes they think that the seven, the seven part or, of it. Or the three. Part, yeah, or, or the yeah. three might be part of the mid. And Jeff went all over the place. No. Oh! Hit Steve with the chair. We get breakfast. Yeah. Oh, so many hits. You're really uh, selling it really well. Yeah. Oh, that, that second one, actually, I felt it. <laughs> yeah. She did hit him hard with that one. <laughs> Who's giving us the breakfast? BJ. BJ is. He said that if you got hit with a chair, yeah. oh, you would so get breakfast. Yeah. That's the best news ever. I forgot my chicken. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't be choking it so much. <laughs> oh, man, I'll take a chair hit any day of the week. Oh, wow. my goodness, that was amazing. We'll come back to the wrestling world, sir. Wow, I really did not think that would happen. <laughs> that, that's worth breakfast. Yeah, and also, yeah. are you okay? Because she did hit you once. Oh, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Lay into it, I Sarah. Heard, I, heard, <laughs> I heard that one time. I'm like, oh, that was a hit. Oh, I've been hit worse with chairs. Okay, good. I know, I've seen it. Honey, yeah. can you pick me up from the ER? Uh, why? Because I wanted breakfast and I got hit with a chair. It's yeah. worth it. <laughs> you know, a little concussion's worth it for a, a, a slow roasted ham and Swiss sandwich. Are you sure you don't have a concussion? Because it was really difficult for you to say it. <laughs> hey, it's Conky here. Yeah. Hey, Conky. <laughs> Did not expect that. That was so great. That just made my morning. Yeah, right? Yeah, that was that's really it. great. Um, <laughs> turn around and she's Sarah with him. And it's not even a steel chair. No. It's a It's a stool. I mean, a yeah. bar stool. Yeah. That would be even weirder. She hit with a stool, which was really... <laughs> I'm not, not cool. down with those kind of matches. Yeah. <laughs> not down with the stool. They only matches. have those matches in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the movie with uh, Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey was How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. 10 Days, that all was, it takes, Steve. That was uh, the one that Jeff got correct. My bad. How many eyes does a bee have? We know it's not one, two, or three. I guess we'll say four. No. Five. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and I don't know anything else about it. I just know that they have five. Five eyes they have. Yeah. Hmm. That's yeah. Yoda right there. <laughs> I mean, that's so weird. It's like, you know, whole, if, like what Fibonacci sort of diagram thing is that? Five is such an uneven number. What's more, what freaks you out more? If a bee flies into your car for a spider, like, lowers itself down in your car. Spider. 
A bee. Bees. A bee. Yeah, Easy. A bee. Bees because they can fly and chase you. And I don't like that. With a spider, you can just kind of do whatever, like cup it and just put it like on the seat next to you if you're driving. A bee stings you. A, f- a spider's going to do nothing except like exist. Totally. Oh, yeah. no, they can That's bite worse. you. I mean, I mean, but still, only, only you get bit by spiders. Yeah. I mean, you can get bit by a spider, which is a pain in the ass, but I'm sure. still afraid of a bee. But if a bee, but. if you leave it alone, just lower the window, it will eventually get itself out. It just it doesn't want to bother you. A spider... Its existence terrifies See, me. See, that's amazing that you actually, I think the bee is much more dangerous to you, and yet you still are so freaked out by spiders. See, you, yeah. It makes you not afraid of bees, which is pretty cool. Yes. See, I just remember being chased by a bee when I was like three or four from the backyard Whoa, into dude. the house, chased me into the house and stung me. So, like, bee, I'm I'm not going to attack a bee, but I'm not going to be near a bee. That, so you you remember that memory, like oh, three or yeah. four years old, a bee chased mm-hmm. you in the house and stung you. I would, yeah, that's the pure terror of my tubby butt running back into the house was just Whoa. enough just to sear into my brain. I, no, I, that I, visualization is really freaking yeah. me out now. I, that's the other thing, too, is that <laughs> if you don't know when you piss the bee off, but then it comes at you. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the thing that irritates me. is like, well, they will come at you. Oh, dude, I've had plenty of weird run-ins. Well, there's more yellow jackets, but also bee. Yeah. Like, one of my earliest memories also was because of a bee. It had nothing to do with the bee itself. My brother punched me in the face when I was in my crib, knocked me back down. Like I just remember that's like my earliest memory in life. He's getting Whoa. punched right in the face, and I remember him explain. Later on, I found out that his excuse was there was a bee by my face, so he was oh. trying to punch the bee. Oh, what a nice brother. Which I, I call BS. <laughs> BS. I I that too. <laughs> I oh, yeah, he, you don't believe he was really trying to help you? No, I legit think he just wanted to punch me, and he found a way to get out of it. What brother would want to do that? My brother. Yeah. yeah. So you've been wrestling since you were, ta- like, way baby. I get it right. now. It was a stiff punch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least it wasn't a chair shot. I wish I could find the picture. Like, there's a picture of me with, like, just a messed up nose and eye from my brother punching me. Wow. And it's like, that is my earliest memory in life. I don't remember anything before that. <laughs> Whoa. That is trippy stuff. And you man. blame the bee. Why do we just? Why can't we remember the good stuff? Like, why do the traumas stick with us and the good stuff we have? I'm sure we have a lot of good the stuff. Big wheel my parents gave me when I was like, your earliest memory True. is the punch in the face. Yeah, that, you know there there had to be greater earlier memories, but we don't remember those. But the first bad memory, that's the only first memory we remember. Because I have one too. If only early memories hurt, then we would be able to remember them. <laughs> all the good ones. Yeah, that sucks, <laughs> man. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. That's not the way we should be. Wise. Uh, finally, there was one last question that neither of you guys got right. Fissures, vents, and plugs are all associated with what geological feature? Geological feature? Geological feature, yeah. A map? No. I mean, I, I, know, I know it has to do with earth and earthquakes or plates or whatever, but I don't know the right word. Uh, volcanoes. Volcano. Volcanoes have fissures, vents, and plugs. Yeah, you're right. I'm an idiot. Yep, and uh, well, if you don't understand the question, you're not going to get it. So sorry. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you're right. But you won, so congratulations, bud. Hey, man. Hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's a wonderful thing. Uh, where are we? Oh, we're over here. Let me go over to uh, SMU uh, because uh, there's a new study out of SMU in Texas. Uh, That's a university, if you don't know. And they say that people are happier when they're spending time with, and I'm going to ask you guys, friends or family? <laughs> no, come on. Come on. Come, come on. on. I mean, do we even have to ask? Nope. Yeah. Come on. Now, Come on. I mean, there's certain includes- members of my family that I'm very happy to be around. Let I'm not going to say that. Let but. me just say partners and children are also included in the study. Does oh. that alter it a little bit? Are you more happy spending time with your friends and family if we throw your partners and your children in there? I know they are our family. But when I think of family, I'm thinking of like my relatives. I'm not thinking of my wife and my child because clearly that's the people I love spending time with. Like I look forward to like, getting home from work and getting to hang out with a little tater tot and my wife as well, of course. But, so are you saying that this study then might be flawed? Well, I think that just kind of messes up my thought now. Yeah. But my first thought was, like, I'm thinking of, like, my family that I grew up with. I'd much rather hang out with my friends. No disrespect to my family. Well, I don't That actually is big disrespect to your family, but that's okay. <laughs> There's, I mean, dude, a hundred times out of a hundred, I, I would opt to hang out with my friends. Do you think, now Now you know how you've altered your situation mm-hmm. now because we put your, your spouse in there and right. everything. Do you think your father, well, your mother's, you're the apple of your mother's eye, so she probably would say she loved hanging out with you. Do you think your father would rather spend time with his family, including spouse and kids, as opposed to his friends? Because of I don't the know fact- my dad has friends. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Nothing like a negative thing. Well, I mean, right. well I, we know his answer is he has to really like hanging out with the family. It's all he's got. I mean, I don't really hear him talk about his friends ever. Like, I, I can't remember the last time my dad brought up any friends. Ooh. Like, he just hangs out with my mom all the time, and then some of my relatives. 
And then there was you guys all growing up, too. Right. I mean, yeah. he had, like, we had neighbors, but my dad was never really, like, the guy that was, like, sociably just hanging out with random people. He just came to work, yelled at us, and then went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Summed up our lives. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Begrudgingly took us places on the weekend. Yep, and then back to the grind again. And back PJ. to the grind. Yeah, okay. I we, listen. I mean, uh, my dad. I do have to say, my dad had a lot of friends. I, you know, it was a boisterous, almost racist friendship that because everybody he was friends with was from. It was an international friendship, even though they all were saying horribly racist things to each other. But they were all of different cultures and, and ethnicities and nationalities to the point where it's like you would think these people hate each other, but yet they were the best of friends and they loved hanging out with each other. But they always just constantly ribbed each other based on their ethnicity or their upbringing, mm-hmm. you know. And it was sounds very Massachusetts of them. It really was. I mean, God forbid the poor guy that moved up from the south i mean this guy came from the south and lived in our neighborhood and he was the rebel i mean they mm-hmm. made fun of him for being inbred and all these horrible stereotypes but he turned around and stereotyped everybody else because our family was italian and then we had a portuguese family there was an asian family and it didn't matter everybody was in on the beatings it was like it was there was nobody that felt like they were being picked on because they gave it as much as they got it but my dad had such a great time with those people i feel like he would definitely pick his friends over my family <laughs> and so uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of anyone in, like my my everyone Texas says same here. Just say I'm pretty sure my dad had no friends either. Ha! Huh? Another person says Marv Albert had his broadcasting partners. They were not his friends. Yes, Steve. Wow. I have many friends in the world of sports. How about Kareem Abdul Jabbar? He was my friend. He calls him Lou. They were oh, that close. That's that's how close they are. Vicky, well, I wonder what about because like, Vicky's very tight with her family. Yeah, like I see them. I mean, right now we're seeing each other every day because I'm helping them move. But even then, like it feels weird when I don't see them for a couple of days. So you definitely would say you have more fun with your family. Oh, I, feel like, I mean, fun, fun. Like I, I enjoy their company. Yeah. Who do you like to spend time with more? What makes you happier? That's the study. Oh, happier. Yeah. That's oh, tough. Oh, I, it's, it's, I'm, I'm that jerk that's going to be like, it's kind of in the middle because like my closest friends are family. Yeah. And that then makes I have sense. That's why I was, I was curious about yours because you are so tight. Like I don't go to like, I wouldn't go to Buffalo Wild Wings, post up at a bar with anyone in my family and talk hockey or life or crack stupid jokes with each other. I mean, the closest would be maybe my brother, but even still like we're so different. Like we love each other and we love spending time. Like going to see Kiss together was fun, but like I would never think about just like, hitting the bars with my, my family. And I have some cousins that, like, we, there was a time in our lives we didn't get to grow up with each other, so I've gone to re-get to know them as an adult, and I forget they're my cousins sometimes because we became such close friends. It's like, oh yeah, we're related, but we just happen to really dig each other. The so. study says, again, who do you spend more, who do you like to spend more time with, your friends or your family, including your partner and your children? Survey says, your friends. Mm-hmm. So Steve... Here's the thing, Steve. Congratulations to you because the study says that we are the least happy when we're spending time with our husband or wife, <laughs> which you're like, that was what almost put you in the, maybe I love my family because, of course, I love hanging out with Tater Tot and your wife. No, that, that threw a wrench in the plans. Yeah. And it turns out. But here's the I'm reason. I'm not so anti-family anymore. No, not so much. But there is a catch. The researchers say the main reason that we like, uh, that we're happy hanging out with our friends more than our family is because it is what we're doing with them as opposed to the fact it's the people we're hanging with. It's the activities that make us happier. And that's the reason. And I guess when you think about it, Steve, like you said, you're hitting the bar, having some really great activities with your friends. Making great memories. Whereas when you get together with your family, it's almost like the older you get, it's just more familial obligations. It's not like a lot of fun activities. No, my family's never like, let's rent a party bus and just go do something stupid in Portland. I wish they would. That'd be amazing. Yeah, that's a good point. I feel like Rev's all about the friends. Uh, uh, other than my wife and my that, cats, yeah. absolutely. My wife. Like, if I never had to deal with my family ever again, I would be happy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, I mean, you know, at least you said no disrespect, Steve. Yeah, Rev is just no, like one hundred percent. Yeah, he said yeah. yeah, he disrespect <laughs> meant. And it, what about Danny? I think. See, okay, but are we counting kids? It's it says here, partner and children. All right, well, that's going to screw up my guess for Danny because yeah, I, I was going to yeah. lean more towards fr- friends. But obviously, I think if, he, if push oh, came to shove, please. he's going to do everything in his power to hang out with Lily. It's true. It's true. But if you take Lily out of the situation, probably 
it's it's actually kind of weird because here in Seattle, since I'm not around family, I would uh, like automatically be like, oh, my friends 100%. Because right, that's what we know. Right. But when you go back to New Mexico, I would actually rather hang out with my family in New Mexico rather than my friends there. You know what I want to see when people include like they like to hang out with their children? Non-custodial parents. I would love to know how many of those actually like spending time with their kids because, again, it's based on activities. And non-custodials like Danny, what do they do when they get together with their kids? It's not just hanging out at the house. They go do fun stuff all the time. I mean, that every time you visit Lily, Danny, it's like you guys, the pictures you take, you're taking her somewhere fun. You're having a blast rather than just what a normal, I think, a normal two-parent family does. You don't get to have a blast every, to every weekend when you see your kid. You just hang out at the house. Maybe you play a game. But you, every time you see her, it's like it's a blast. True. I also would argue, though, that I, like... Uh her mom and I have come with up with a plan to try to make it as normal as possible. So especially with and especially this past trip with coronavirus, there's nothing to do. So we did just we spent a lot of time at the hotel. We colored. We did a lot, like a lot of her like. Oh, uh, we know you colored. It was Facebook Live almost yes, every day. We did. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Is like that kind of thing. Is so we try to keep it as like normal as possible instead of just going to Disneyland, quote unquote, every time. You know what I mean? Making it a party. I like yeah. how Danny says that he. Oh, I'm trying to keep it that way. Like you wouldn't want. To to go to Disneyland every day. Oh, I would go to Disneyland yeah, every day, but, yeah. you know. If that was the case, I'm visiting Lily, too. <laughs> this is your other dad. Yeah. Here Welcome we to my two dads. I'm your Disney dad. <laughs> Whoa. No. I'm not sure how that sounds, so I'm going to get back to you. All right. Well, you yeah. know, I mean, sometimes in my head it sounded less creepy yeah. than it does when I say it out yeah, loud. Uh, That's yeah. been my life problem. Yeah, we'll fix that. We'll fix that. <laughs> I meant no creepiness. Yeah. I mean oh. no disrespect You creepiness. mean no disrespect or creepiness. Rev, how about you? I just want a free trip to Disney. Rev, you still hate your family? Oh, yeah, still. Okay, good. All right, we got everything covered. <laughs> Nothing's changed really in the last uh, three mm. minutes. Disney dad and the family hater. It's a new show here. <laughs> Hey, Thursday wh- nights on Fox. Why has a man kept another man's half-eaten sandwich for 60 years? That's right, 6-0. Why not? Oh, good question. <laughs> you know what? Well, you're going to hear from this guy at 717 on The Rock. DJ and Mix mornings on The Rock at 99.9 KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Should you buy or lease your next car? Most experts would advise that in the long run, buying is more economical than leasing. When you lease a car, you will not build up equity, and you may be responsible for wear and tear or excessive mileage charges. If you do decide to lease, be careful and pay attention to the realities of leasing. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Bundle multiple policies for savings of up to 45% on your farmer's auto insurance. It's like a buffet without the regret. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available with select Farmers branded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers, Trucker, Fire Insurance Exchange, Farmers, New World Life Insurance Company, or affiliate. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a dude. His name is Steve. He's from Illinois. And he's celebrating the 60th, 60, 60th anniversary of having an unusual keepsake. He kept the sandwich that he's kept frozen ever since it was half eaten by President Richard Nixon back in 1960. He wasn't president then, but it was, uh, uh, you know, he was uh, vice president at the time. And uh, he was like, man, the vice president ate a sandwich but didn't finish it. I'm going to grab this thing and keep it. He was a kid. He just thought, I'm grabbing this. This is something. Because you, know, you hear stories of people like grabbing, like say they see a celebrity drinking out of a coffee cup and they grab that and they hold on to it. Yeah, and, and they, like you said, he was a kid when he grabbed this back in 1960. 60 years ago, September 22nd, 1960, and my Boy Scout troop was assigned as security. So I got positioned just right behind Vice President Nixon. They served him a buffalo barbecue sandwich on one of those six-inch paper plates, and he took a couple of bites and commented on how tasty, how good it was. He got up, and he had to exit to go make his uh, political speech. I didn't know that buffalo chicken was even a thing back then. I or guess. Bar- buffalo barbecue chicken, Yeah, you say? That's, that's what I thought he said. I think it might be different than what we know as buffalo chicken. Oh. You know what I mean? Because like buffalo like, barbecue chicken, that's right. like, yeah. I'm very curious now. I have no idea. But it is the jar that it's in yeah. in the sandwich. <laughs> How about that, dude? And uh, his name is Steve, and in this clip he talks about how he saw his chance and grabbed the sandwich when Nixon had left the area. 
once he left, I, I just looked down at the picnic table and everybody else was gone. And that half-eaten sandwich was still on the paper plate. I looked around and nobody else was there to think about it. And I picked it up and hopped on my bicycle and sped home. How about as a little kid, he was able, you know, you know, as he was able to still keep this in his parents' house. Like, you know, you'd think his family would be like, what are you doing? Well, also, I think it's just crazy he was able to get that kind of access, which makes it, I don't know what's crazy, him taking the chicken sandwich or the fact that they employed Boy Scouts to be the security. <laughs> yeah, that. For a vice president. Dude. What uh, times have changed, man. Yeah, they have. And not to be completely morbid, but of course, you know, it was what, 1963. Right. When we lost President Kennedy. And I think all, all bets were off that nobody like in Nixon's position was ever going to be unprotected or had little kids be the, the, the security. Yeah, you think Nixon's like, you remember that time I went to that small town and they had a bunch of Boy Scouts doing security for me? That's not happening ever again. Not at all. Some kid stole my chicken sandwich. I went back for it and it was gone. It was an inside job. I just know this. Whenever I had bright ideas uh, and I went home, with my, my parents, of course, were in charge. And so a lot of things I wanted to do, they'd be like, no, you're not going to do that. And I'm surprised dude, like that he was allowed to like take this and keep it and for all these years before he could be an adult and keep it in his own place. Uh, I just imagine like, you know, his mom had a reaction when he got home. Ran in the door. I said, Mom. I've got the sandwich that uh, Nixon took a couple bites out of, and she was surprised. She said, well, what do you want me to do with it? I said, freeze it. So she, in her infinite wisdom, put it in a uh, plastic baggie and put that inside of a, a Musselman's applesauce jar, stuck it in the freezer, and that's the way it still is today, 60 years later. Those birds need to understand he's doing an interview. They need to be quiet. Yeah, exactly. That is, that, and, and, and so you'd be like, okay, so what does that get you? Turns out it got him an appearance on The Tonight Show back yeah, in back 1988. In, yeah, look at that. Johnny Carson holing the jar. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, he got to go on. That's the equivalent of like, getting to be on like you know Jimmy Fallon right now. Oh, definitely. Or Kimmel even. Oh, yeah, I mean, you're well, absolutely those, right. You know, I yeah, mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, he's he's getting to be on one of those big shows, and um, he's even published a book called, uh, and it came out this year called "The Sandwich That Changed My Life," which pretty much is a story about this. Which I feel like we've heard the whole story. I don't know if I got to get the book. Do I need the book? <laughs> I kind of want to know what else has happened in his life. Or is it just chapter one? I was on Johnny Carson show. Chapter two. Yeah, that, I just wrote a book. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, but that's fantastic, man! You got to be on the Tonight Show. A texture brought up a point, and I, I guess I just in my head, I, it's almost like a Mandela effect. You hear something, and you just create your own thing. Like they said, he didn't say buffalo chicken; he just said buffalo barbecue sandwich. Oh. So was it just buffalo meat barbecued on a sandwich? I have no idea. That's a good question. He, he had maybe we got to get the book. Taste like? Can we uh, unfreeze it, microwave it? <laughs> no, uh, dear, don't think is it I, edible. I, I did that with his my life, Steve. We yeah. don't want to eat it. He's not going to want to anywhere it. near that sandwich. Uh, he is what, top of security. What about a nibble? No. What if somebody just? Yeah, I know, right? Well, what if somebody just uh, trolled him, got into his house, microwave the sandwich? Oh, <laughs> and said, I'm going to eat it. Yeah. Yeah, I have your Boy Scouts here to save you now. Wow. Oh, <laughs> oh that's horrible. <laughs> It's the lukewarm topic of the day. It's like a au jus dip? I, 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 listen, these are all important questions. You're going to have to buy the book, Steve. I'd just rather buy a barbecue sandwich. Okay, that's a good <laughs> idea. So this dude has kept Richard Nixon's half-eaten sandwich for 60 years. Based on this, what is the odd thing that you have kept for years? Or what strange thing do you possess that you know you will never get rid of? 206 421 Rock, Texas at 77999. What is the odd thing that you've kept for years? The strange thing you possess you know you'll never get rid of? Your calls, your texts after Foo Fighters on The Rock. BJ and Mix, mornings on The Rock at 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. A guy has kept Richard Nixon, the former president, his half-eaten sandwich. He's kept this sandwich for 60 years. Based on this, what is the odd thing that you have kept for years, or what strange thing do you possess that you will never get rid of? 206-421-ROCK, text us at 77999. Uh, someone just texted and said, I have the same hairbrush since I was 17. I'm 51 now. And yes, I wash it from Dave and Everett. So I have the same hairbrush, too. Since Yeah, yeah, you really, you really put it to good use. That hairbrush is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, this is something I told. I forget about it until I go to my parents' house and we've been moving and packing. And I forget my mom still has my original, you know, that little belly button nub babies get that like falls off after yes. like a week. My mom still has it in my baby album. Okay, that's a little weird. Oh. She kept everything. I was so glad when that thing finally fell off. It's weird looking. Top. Yeah, because I was like looking at her and I'm like, man, everything about you is just pure perfection, except for this weird like bottle cap that's on your belly button. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a weird thing because like, it gets all hardened and nasty. Like, yeah. I, I, I never really thought of it as weird until I got older, but they kept all my baby teeth. Like By they, I mean my mom. Like, I, we have everything they can. Like, she lost my brother's, so she could never put his in his album, but we still have oh, mine. Wow. And I thought about it. I'm like, if I, you know, once my mom talks about it, it's like when, you know, we're no longer on this planet, you know, a lot of this stuff's going to go to you. And I'm like, oh, I can't throw it away. I don't want my mom haunting me. Buy a mannequin and recreate yourself. There you go. Uh, <laughs> one I just, of those little baby mannequins. Could I have it? Because I'm going to just leave it at crime scenes. Just your teeth everywhere. <laughs> that way Vicky gets arrested times. for all these crimes she didn't commit. See, the baby teeth, I, I understand. My mom did the same thing. and I have All of them? Uh, yeah, I think wow. so. I found it by I accident. I don't have to save all of them. I'll save one. I saved one. I saved one of Lily's, the one that I pulled. But that's, that's yeah. it. I'm it's, not going anymore. Like one's enough. Here's proof. You once had small teeth. <laughs> I think it's a Latino, a Latina mom thing. Oh yeah, like everyone saves their baby teeth. Like all, all the Latina moms I know. Well, I texted her, Mrs. Jones. You know, our, our teacher friend. She says after my mom passed away, I went through a lot of her things. I found a bag of my teeth. Uh, at first, I was disgusted, but now I can't bring myself to get rid of them. Don't judge me. Like, where do you get Not rid alone. of them, anyways? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It does seem weird to me, but... Uh, it also seems weird to just throw them in the garbage. What about like a, like a puka shell necklace and replace some of the puka oh, shells with teeth? That is what my mom always said she was going to do with my teeth. Eek. Great just minds. make a necklace out of it. Great minds think alike, BJ. Is your mom a witch? <laughs> right? <laughs> Could very well be. That might be what's going on. Witch. Not, no. Yes. Okay. Bruca. Yes, yes. Thank you. I, want her to I, don't know if mine is, uh, I don't know if mine is strange. I think it's, it's kind of pathetic is what mine is. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the, the fun of it all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I've, I've kept... Every greeting card since I can remember. Aww. Every greeting card. Every greeting card. Every card for every occasion, I've kept it. And the reason... From anybody? From anybody. Oh, we got to start spending you some greeting cards to yeah. make your life more miserable. Yeah, I've got, I'm, I've got a huge bag. Uh, and I, every greeting card I get for everything, I've kept, I've, I've kept it at least since I was a kid. From what I remember, probably maybe my teens, I have been saving these because it was... And this is what I would do. I would stand in that mirror and go, "This is proof that people do love you." So stop thinking that you're. Oh a, man! Stop thinking you're not lovable. And so I, I would keep the cards as proof and go through just to remind myself when I was feeling depressed. I get that. There was one time in college I was high on mushrooms and I hid myself in a closet because I was. I just assumed that every all of my friends in my fraternity wanted to kill me. I was like, nobody likes me. They're all trying to kill me. There's nobody that loves me. And then I came across a picture of me, my buddy Andy, and my buddy Matt in the closet because it was his closet. He wanted me out of it. I wouldn't get out. <laughs> and I just stared at that for hours going, at least these two love me. They took a picture with me. <laughs> so it's the same thing. Wow. And the trouble is, is yours was mushroom induced. Mine was like real life. Like, like I, 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 I was sober when I was thinking this way. Up until that moment, I did not feel safe in that house. I was like, I got uh, two guys that'll save me. They took a picture with me. That's it. So you know you had them. They got my back. <laughs> hey, nothing's as weird as this texture that says my yeah. mom saved my foreskin. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> no. Why would you do? I didn't know that was an option. That's an option. Like they'll give it to you. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I mean, <laughs> I have to ask my mom. Hey, mom, you saved everything. Did you? I, I'm not asking that. I've, I don't. Ask that. I don't know if that's an option. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember it being an option. Honestly, I think they have to give you everything because it's technically yours. Yeah, but why would you want that? I would. No, I'm not saying I would. Yeah. I'm just saying I think that they, if you ask for anything, if you get it removed, they probably will give it to you in a jar. Okay. Man, that's the day I call. I, I, I look at all my coworkers and say, I'm, I'm going home for the rest of the day. I'm like, why? Well, the lady just wanted her son's foreskin. And I just, you know, yeah. I, just, I need a day off. And how do you present that to your kid at some point in their life? Here's what we saved of yours when you were a baby. I 16th mean, you're, birthday you're with just all like, their friends around. What is the what? <laughs> See, that's not fair. Because, like, I asked for my appendix when I got it removed. They wouldn't give it to me. Oh, man. Apparently, it's really tiny. I don't know. Oh, well, it is. Just, I think come out of you. Yeah. <laughs> 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Uh, so he says, uh, Oh, I, I still have the podcast that the men's room did at a five o'clock shot of the day that they did for our dog the day that we had to put her down from cancer. Aww. 
Oh. Yeah, I wouldn't get rid of that either. That's, yeah. a, that's a cool keepsake. Like, I think about, um, there's a guy, Rev, you know him too, uh, Jeremy, but he goes by James Vanderbeek on oh, Twitter. yeah. Super funny guy on Twitter. He's a great guy. I've met him many, many times. He's a good bud. Uh, but when Lucy passed away, he took a picture that he saw on my Facebook page, because he's an incredible artist. He does, like, artwork for a lot of wrestlers, actually, and, like, on the national level. And he took that picture, and he turned it into a drawing and i still have that drawing oh that's cool a piece of paper that he did it on and i, I always had like thoughts of maybe turning it into a t-shirt or something but it's funny because as we're doing this move and getting everything packed up i came across that picture again just put a big smile on my face i was like that's without a doubt one of the coolest things that somebody who listened to our show has done for for me just as like a way like hey i have a certain talent i want to just be able to give you something to help you deal with the loss of your dog so i get what that texture is talking so you're about. keeping it right Oh no! I, I tore it up and threw yeah. it away, yeah, okay. dude. No. I can't bring everything yeah, into a new house. You, got, you had something you had to make the cut. I, I figured you guys knew that yeah. part. Just, uh, we got a new. <laughs> Take a picture of it. That's yeah. good enough, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> no, I would never get rid of that. We got a new poll that found the top things that we overthink. Oh, I bet I'm a big part of all this. <laughs> yep. What do you think top the list? Yeah. I'll what do you think you. it is, BJ? <laughs> think Let about me, it. I'm going to get back to you on that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. Seven forty-seven on the rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another listener question. How do I rebuild my credit after filing bankruptcy? Uh, you rebuild it, you know, one creditor at a time by making your payments on time to, on your on your rent or your mortgage, by continuing to make car payments at, on a car that you keep during your case. Um, you can also, as I said, you can almost always get a credit card almost immediately after filing bankruptcy. Sometimes it's a secured card and it'll almost always have a really high interest rate on it, but you can get a small balance credit card and you know, charge a tank of gas or, or a dinner once a month on that and make the payment, pay it off every month, and that'll help you build a credit history one creditor at a time and will help you rebuild your credit over time. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. When was the last time you took a look at the asset allocation of your investments? With the recent increases in the stock market, your investments may have behaved differently, with some gaining or losing more than others. This can throw your asset allocation out of balance. If you haven't rebalanced recently, take a closer look to make sure your allocations meet your objectives. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU.